Well, first of all, I'm, I'm a big fan of his. I think he does a great job. And uh, so when, when I got in the women's game, I thought I'd better learn from the best. And so we try to schedule them for a long time, and we end up finally getting that done. Um, but for me, you know, uh, Gino is back east, and he's a big Celtic fan. So when he, he kind of knew me a little bit, knew that I played for the Celtics, so that helped. But um, I have a lot of respect. I think he, he does a great job. He coaches the way that I try to coach. He's, he's a, his teams are very physical. His teams play together. He's hard on them, but he's fair. And uh, so that's the kind of coach that I've, that I've wanted to, to really be. How do you uh, avoid the intimidation factor of you know, undefeated, eight national championships? You guys just in this kind of mindset of, hey, we're just happy to, happy to be here right now. Uh, how, how do you avoid them kind of getting caught up in who they're playing? You know, that's, that's a big, big question. A lot of teams, they, run, they see their name on the uniform. I, I told my girls today that when I played for the Celtics, we won the game sometimes before it even started because of that, the Celtics. I told them you got to go out and play. You got to go out and not worry about it. Not, yeah, it's exciting to play them, no question. First time I played Dr. J, I was nervous, but as soon as he dunked on me one time, that was it. You know, and I told them they'll come out and play our kind of game. I think it's been great because we've played some really good teams in the NCAA tournament. NC State was good, and so was Nebraska, so I think that will help us, but they got to come out and, and play our game. We can't be in awe or whatever. We got to come out and execute and punch them back and not let them punch us. Do they believe in themselves even more after those two NCAA wins? Especially yes. Not that tough yes, yes, lost. they do. I think uh, they really believe. They believe that all year. They believe they're, if they play their game and do what they need to do, they can beat anybody. If we play against boys every day, they're just as athletic. We just got to go out and not let not let the emotions and other things affect what we're trying to do. Just go out and, and really execute and do the things that we that we need to. You know, Lexi's tough. They're not going to get into her head. Kim's a five-year senior. You know, she's been there. Morgan, I think, showed that she can't play physical and that she's excited to play a really good player. And I think Jen, um, Jen's going to intimidate them a little bit. They're not used to playing a six-seven kid that's active, and so it'll be it'll be some really good matchups and. Hopefully we'll just come out and, and just and not let that bother us. Come out and do the things that we do best. How does a deep run in tournament in this week 16 benefit the program, both maybe in intangible and tangible ways? It helps us exposure-wise, help this conference and show that, hey, our conference is strong. We had five really good teams this year and to prove that, hey, we're, it's not just a fluke. Second, recruiting. There's no question. People see you on TV, see you play. It, it gets that, that name out. We've been really lucky with, with getting the exposure that we get here with, with, our, with BYU TV and other things. But this is, our, this is a great opportunity for us to show what BYU's made. And hopefully these young ladies will watch it and be impressed and, and want to come. I know it's already helped so far. And if we can take care of business and win that game, it'll probably be one of the biggest upsets ever. So um, I th that, that has to help us that way. I think the, the next part of it is, is it's just good for our program to be successful beating somebody that's the top of, you know, top of the game and knowing that they can do it if they come ready to play and execute, listen to their coaches and follow the game plan. What was the impact of that 2002 Sweet 16? What did that have impact have on the program? You know, it really helped us because it really got us over the hump. The problem was my best player didn't had her worst game of, the, of her life, and she still looks back on it. She sent me a text and said, hopefully your players won't go three for 21 like I did. So, you know, I think it, it really set a, a tone for our, this program. It built a great foundation, and now it's taken us 13 years to get back, and hopefully these guys will appreciate that and take advantage of it. In life, when you have opportunities, you need to take advantage of it, and that's what I've that's what I've told them, and hopefully we'll be able to do that. How much can you talk about this, uh, the recruiting of the support of Nebraska fans you did uh, after the game the other night? Well, I, I went and talked to them. They said they'd be there, and they said we're going to cheer for you. We kind of had this last time we went. We we beat Iowa State, and then we went back, and I, I, I you know I think Nebraska will be on our side. I think they'll. They'll, they always want the underdog to win, and uh, it's kind of nice. It's nice. It's nice to be the underdog sometimes, to go out and say, give it your all. Don't have that much to worry about. But UConn's been here. We haven't. That's their advantage, and uh, hopefully we'll go out and play our, our kind of basketball. That's what I want these, these guys to do.
Any particular characteristics of Geno's teams that you've seen over the years that, that make them such a tough matchup? They, they have inside, outside presence. They execute their offense perfectly. They read the defense as good as anybody. Defensively, they're just physical and tough, and they don't they don't beat themselves defensively. They make you hit shots. They make you make plays. And then um, probably their biggest thing is they believe they're the best. They believe nobody can beat them on it. He, you, you saw his comment. If we if we play our game, nobody in the country can beat us. And he believes that with with all his teams, and they they all believe that. They believe that if they go and execute, and I, and I think my team has kind of got that this year. They believe that if they play their game and do the things they're supposed to, they can be anybody. And that's that's what we want to get a, get our programs. But he's a great coach. He's been there. He, he doesn't fold under pressure. Um, you know, he's, he's been in every big game you can. How do you get them out of their game? If they if they rely so much on execution, how do you get them to get them out of Get them out of rhythm. You know, we're going to change things up. We're going to man, zone, press, try to get them do things that we can try to get them out, but more importantly, we just we gotta we gotta take care of and play our defensive principles and take care of the ball. We we cannot turn the ball over. Uh, the times we played in the last time, we we had 20 something turnovers. We can't we can't do that. We have to take care of the ball. You talked about how how it's taken 12 years to get back to the Sweet 16. Do you feel like this program at this moment has kind of the talent and and the the base to kind of keep? Maybe the success get this team in position for that kind of success. Yes, yeah, I really believe that. I believe we've got some good young players. You know, you have to have a lot of luck. And uh, I've had some really good teams between that time, but a key player tears their ACL or a team player leaves or a player um, decides that she don't want to play anymore. And I've had a lot of that. And, and so that's kind of hurt our team a little bit. But I'm hoping this this will be a good foundation for us to keep getting better and doing that and recruiting the right players that fit in this system to, to be able to, to do, play, the, play the kind of basketball that I want to play. And our game is very similar to, to, to UConn, very similar. And that's that's how I try to build this team, and that's what I want to do. When when Jen sits with her fourth foul against Nebraska and, and Zojan kind of goes on this, this tear, what are you thinking as a coach? And, thank, how, and how does that help you going forward? Thank goodness that Joe Jean's ready to play. And, uh, you know, she's been a big time game player for us. And, you know, I, I wasn't planning on setting Jen out that long, but we were going, we were playing so well. And Joe, so Jean was filling it and Bailey was doing what she needed to. And a good coach lets his run stay. He doesn't, he doesn't just too much when things are going well. And, and, uh, but it, I was so happy for her because she's had a hard year. It's, you know, it hasn't been as easy for her in some games, and, but she, she stepped up to the plate, and, you know, we, we wouldn't be here with, with, you know, without her performance. you got uh, 11 uh, girls on the roster from Utah, four starters from Utah. What does that say about maybe the talent and just kind of how you built this team? I really appreciate that. I, I, I take a lot of pride in recruiting in-state kids, and I don't want to miss out because, you know, I was here, and nobody recruited me, and I thought, hey, there's a lot of good players here in Utah. It, it means a lot because um, when I go in recruiting, you know, a, a local player, I can say, look, and I, I've had a lot of success with with good local players, and um, you know, we've been fortunate. We've we've had some really good ones there, and hopefully, you know, the state will continue that. But um, I've always tried to do that. I've always tried to recruit the best I can right here in front of me, and uh, it's really paid off for us.